Okay, this is a horse chestnut we have here on the farm that I've been very concerned with about some of the rot that's going on and how long it potentially might live or not live because there's a huge amount of uh, healing growth here but then there's a huge amount of rot on the inside and because we're right on the road my concern is the life of this tree so I have tree surgeon Adam here who's uh, gonna tell me about this new uh, technique from Germany uh, yeah it was developed and, and it's manufactured in Germany um, and it's uh, called uh, Picus test uh, Picus Picus yeah P -I -C -U -S. okay P-I-C-U-S okay and this specific uh, test is a, a tomograph a sound tomograph test kind of like an ultrasound type yeah, thing yeah okay very very similar to an ultrasound and that's where it was derived from okay and um, so what will happen is it's uh, non-invasive um, so you uh, don't have to stick rods in like a lot of traditional assessments of trees they would be sticking stuff yeah, in it, exactly yeah they'd be using uh, they'd break the they'd, life barrier they'd break the cambium yeah yeah whereas this will uh, it'll only protrude into the bark itself it won't go past the cambium layer um, and the cambium layer, for those who don't know, that's the layer between, that's like the skin of the tree under the bark. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the cambium layer will protect the xylem where the nutrients flow. Yes. Um, you don't want to break that. That is, the, that is exactly what fungi want. That break that in the cambium, in the that, skin yeah, underneath the yeah, bark. That's probably the most common uh, sapwood exposed fungi would, would target that area. Yes. Um, so this is the, the most non-invasive testing that you can do, apart from a visual assessment. But with a visual assessment, you won't be able to calculate the exact risk that tree poses. And, how and the density. And the density or the residual wall yeah. that will be left in healthy wood. Okay. So um, there will be between 8 and 12 sensors placed around the circumference. Of the tree. Of the tree. Okay. Um, so if we have sensor 1 here, yeah. Um, that sensor will say, uh, fire a frequency from say 1 to 12, 1 to 11, 1 to 10, 1 to 9 and so forth. Back to all the, the way around the, the circumference way, of the, the tree. All the way around to the circumference. Then it will go to sensor 2 and it will do the same and it will basically map all the lines uh, right across the tree until it goes right around to sensor 12 and um, then it will finish. Yeah. And you will get a readout of the density and the residual wall left in that tree on a computer screen. It will map the whole lot. It will also place, it will measure the diameter of the tree mm -hmm. and it will place a red line on the tree, the printout of that tree, where there is how much residual wall should be left. You will then be able to gauge by the color of the graph or the printout. Uh, of how much residual as wall is left. And, if and residual wall we're talking about is the living wall that hasn't rotted, yeah. that's healthy. That's healthy and that's the supporting structure of the tree because hollow trees aren't that dangerous as long as there's enough residual wall The thickness left. around, they can have a full, almost full circumference yeah. that can be uh, like three to four inches thick yeah. and still be hollow inside and still stand because their 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 life's blood is on the outside perimeter of the tree yeah exactly and you can have more residual wall and have a cavity of up to a third of the circumference of the tree and the tree will still be able to support itself and this for example is a cavity which is approximately, approximately a third yeah. of the uh, circumference of the tree so basically because there's a lot of healing, see, this is the tree self-healing here. So, at what, where it's rotten here, you can hear the difference. So this is the healing of what, so potentially you're saying with this assessment, this kind of ultrasound of trees, except it's called... Picus test. Picus test of trees, you can hopefully keep this tree living and standing longer rather than being concerned about having to take it down because it might uh, blow down in a storm across the road or something like that. Yeah, so we can 
we can calculate uh, the wind loading uh, on that tree. We can we can uh, map the tree as a whole. Yeah. We can uh, measure how much of a sail that canopy has. Um, we can calculate the wind load and how much that timber can support. So the breaking strain of that residual wall can be calculated from all this test from this test, and we can know for sure that that tree can withstand uh, storm force wind. That's so, just fantastic <laughs> news that this can be done in a non-invasive way. Because yeah. traditionally, it was like poking things into the yeah. and breaking through the life support system of the tree yeah. to get the analysis. Yeah. So the most common, probably the most common tool that's actually still used is a, a micro drill. Uh, now it's a two millimeter hole. Tiny, it's but tiny, but they've actually noticed that a bigger hole is uh, l uh, less destructive or less harmful because the air the, exactly. circulation. The, yeah, the air circulation. The larger hole will dry out, the smaller one won't, and fungi need a certain amount of moisture to be active. And thrive on that, and then go and invade the tree and do its dirty deed. Exactly, yeah. Ah, uh, well, that's fantastic news. Well, I look forward to your getting these Germans yeah, so, uh, coming over to Ireland. Yeah, Lena and Garneau are coming over from Arbor Analyst uh, early October, and we hope to carry out some uh, tests all around the country and show people what we can do. And this would be, this tree would be an excellent example for that. So I'm looking very much forward to their visit.